Friendly hello hi everyone, my name is Monday and welcome to a little bit of a different video. Now if you guys probably noticed by the weird thumbnail and title, this is a video about cakes. Oh my god, yes, freak out, get all your screams out, anyone who doesn't want to watch this, run away and leave, it's not going to be gross, I promise. I am here to debunk all of the crap that goes on around kinks, fetishes, BDSM, all that shit, because a lot of friends, not just like one or two, it's been like seven or eight friends of mine, have been struggling with, is this appropriate, I'm just this really nasty, gross person, oh my god, who in the world thinks like me, and it's like, no. Seriously, there's a massive community that is made just for the sole purpose of being able to explore yourself and explore the different things about you and the different things that you like and may not like. So, in order to discuss kinks and BDSM, we first have to go through some definitions. Now, there's quite a few of them here, so hold on tight, it's going to take a little while. Number one is aftercare. Aftercare is the period of time after play in which players check in, reestablish connections, and it is considered an essential part of play. In some cases, it involves the dom taking care of the sum and making sure they're both okay and comfortable. So this is usually a very normal part of anything that people want to do, is if you're going to do something that has to do with any of the kinks, bondages, all that jazz, you have to have aftercare. Because one of the people is usually in a more submissive state. They're the person who's being tied up, the person who's being whipped, the person who has all of this stuff done, the person on the receiving end. You're going to want to make sure that they are okay, that they're not in pain, that they aren't about to die, that they're not bleeding, that they're not freaking out in tears. So that is what aftercare is. It's just definitely make sure that you're talking to the people around you because communication is very important. BDSM, a modern acronym used to refer to the kink and fetish communities. The letters stand for different things such as bondage and discipline, dom sub, sadism and masochism, and slave and master. So this is sort of where the power play comes in, is this is the community of people who are doing this, and there's always someone who is on top and someone who's on the bottom, and in that way it's the giver and the receiver. So whoever is inflicting punishment and whoever is having the punishment inflicted on them is what all of those different things mean, especially dom and sub, slave and master, sadism and masochism, that's what it is. Bondage, restraint or restriction of the sub, self-explanatory. Coloring represents someone's identity as a submissive or imbued with a meaning by the owner. I can actually say that this is something that I have as well. You can tell I have a collar. It's not necessarily a bad, dirty thing. It is something that's completely normal, and I usually wear this in my everyday life because it has a sort of safety feeling. It's a sort of connection to the place that I am, that I belong somewhere, and it's not actually sexual at all. Some people it can be, but for some, it's not. Dungeon. Large group spaces where play parties are held and monitored. Now, I have never been to one of these. I've never seen it, but I have heard of them. And that is apparently a dungeon is a large space where people will gather to explore what they like, what they don't like. There's different things there that you can do. You can invite other people to help test out what you really think fits and what you don't really like. They are usually monitored by someone in a more understanding space, someone who's done this stuff before, someone who understands what's going on and how far you can push your limits. DS or SM, the dom and sub relationships. Now this is something that I've been saying a couple times, dom and sub. It's pretty self-explanatory. Dominant, submissive. The person who's dominant is the person who has the power. The submissive is the person who is giving the power to their dom. Hard limit, a specific action or element that someone isn't comfortable with. There's a lot of different things that people can be uncomfortable with. For instance, someone can be comfortable with being tied up, but they don't like being hit. Someone can be comfortable with being hit, but they don't like being beat on because that's a fetish. It's okay to not like to do something. You just need to make sure that the people around you are aware of what you like, what you don't like, and what you are not going to budge on. Impact play, a category of sensation play where one person, if hit with hand flogger paddles or whips. Very dangerous, know what you're doing. Impact play is such a huge part of the BDSM community. You need to make sure that you know what you are doing because there's a lot of damage that can be done by hitting someone. A lot of people think that it's really cool, it's really fun, and it can be, but you need to be careful. You need to understand anatomy so you know I can hit here, but I can only hit this hard. I can't hit here and this part, it's okay to just wail on. You need to understand, especially you just need to communicate and figure out what the other person is comfortable with. Play, general verb to indicate BDSM actions, obvious. 
Sadomasochism, someone who derives pleasure from pain or humiliation. This is actually a thing. I didn't know this until I looked it up. Like, I kind of figured that there was something like it, but I didn't actually know the term. It's someone who enjoys either being in pain, watching someone else in pain, or being humiliated or humiliating someone else, and they get pleasure out of it. It's not really a bad thing. It's a little different from what most people think is acceptable, but it doesn't mean that it's bad in any sense. Safe word, a pre-negotiated word that either party can use to pause, check in, or end the play. Bad examples are no and stop, and good examples are red for stop or yellow for slow down. Safe words are so important if you're going to be doing this. For instance, some of the things that people enjoy doing is role play, like I'm the master, you're the servant, I'm a teacher, you're the naughty schoolgirl, that sort of thing. And it's okay to have safe words. It is actually really, really good idea to have safe words. But the thing is, is that if it is a power play or if it is a role play where you are trying to be, oh my God, I don't want this to happen, make it stop. Using no and stop as safe words is very bad because you're going to be yelling them anyway. So your person, your dom is not gonna have any idea what you actually mean or when you want them to stop. That's why it's a good idea, and the most common words used are red and yellow. Red, like stop signs, is just stop. Red, you stop it now, you stop whatever you're doing, drop what you're doing, and check in. Are you okay? Are you hurt? Yellow means I'm kind of getting uncomfortable with where we are, so slow down, a little less harsh, but you can keep going. SSC, safe, sane, and consensual. Make sure you have all three of these before you play. That's pretty self-explanatory. This was a term that was created by the BDSM community to help ensure that play would be very, very safe. You want to make sure that what you're doing is not dangerous, that both parties are completely sane and of sound mind, and that it is consensual. Vanilla, non-kink-oriented sex. This isn't really a BDSM term, but it is something that does come along with the group, is... Vanilla. That is what is used to describe just normal sex. One that doesn't include tying up or wax or any of that jazz, just normal person in person. So that was the list of terms and there's a lot of different things that you can do with your fetishes or your kinks and it's okay to try them out. You just need to make sure that you are using some of the terms, that you're following people's advice, that you know what you're doing. And if you don't know what you're doing, look it up. Don't be afraid to explore. Ask people questions. It's not a bad thing to be curious. I actually also assembled a little fetish list here to kind of show like where it ranges from. There's everything from age play, talking dirty, being bitten, asphyxiation, hot and cold, fantasies, and even tentacles. It doesn't matter what you're into as long as you're open and honest with your partner and very communicative about what you want to do, what you want to try out, and make sure you establish a safe place and a safe word, then anything that you do is fine and it's perfectly normal. It is normal to feel these in it's normal to feel these urges. It's normal to want to explore, to be curious about what your body likes, what it doesn't like. And if you're anywhere in your 20s, 30s, 40s, it it's okay. Explore. Find out what you like. It's never too late. It might be a bit too early if you're like 13 or 14, seriously. But if you're of legal age and want to try it out, go for it. So this was just a little expose on what kinks are, BDSM, how to go about doing stuff. There's lots of different places online that you can go to. There's lots of different communities that you can talk to and people that you can go out and reach out to like, hey, what do I do? How do I do this? What is this? You can look up different things on how anatomy works, where you can hit people, how hard, because it's okay. It's not a bad thing to be a masochist at all. It's actually kind of intriguing, I guess. So. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you like this video and want to see more information on different things in our culture and society that you might not be so certain about, let me know in the comments below. And don't forget to like and subscribe if you want to see more on my channel. I will see you, lovely marshmallows, in the next one. Bye!